Hola, ¿qué tal mi gente? My name is Brian Ortega and I promise you today you're going to learn all the necessary tools for you to master Photoshop. And that's all going to happen in the next 30 minutes. So brace yourself. So if you're ready, let's go. Okay, now que estamos en mi pantalla, vamos a abrir Photoshop. So now we have the first window for Photoshop and we're obviously going to go to create new. Now in this window, you're going to select the size of the file that, that you're going to be using in Photoshop. Here they have a couple of presets. Then here they have uh, photos and they have prints, arts and illustration, the web, the mobile. So just in case you wanna work in some stuff like that. So you, if you wanna work on a thumbnail for YouTube, you use these presets. Let's just say that we're gonna create one by ourselves. In this case, I wanna create something 36 by 24 and inches, this is inches. Uh, you can change it to pixels, you can change it to centimeters depending on where you are located. Um, I am in New York, US, so I'm going to be using inches. Here you use the orientation, you change orientation to vertical or horizontal. I'm going to choose horizontal. And, and this is going to be the resolution of the, of the file. So if you want to print uh, whatever, what's um, recommended is to be above 300, but if it's going to be digitally, you can just do 175, 172, that's around what it's needed. Um, but oh yes, for the sake of the tutorial, I'm gonna use 300 just for a higher quality. And the custom background color, uh, white, 99% of the times I choose white because I can build up on it later on. You can choose different colors like red, black, whatever, but I just, you should leave it on white. Open up, create. All right, so now that we're here in the Photoshop interface, um, the first thing you have to know is that Photoshop is a platform that works by layers. So on the right side, you're going to have the layer um, window. In this window, um, you're going to be shown all the layers that you have already created. The first one obviously is zero. If you go down here, um, icon right here with a plus sign in the middle, then you can create another one. So basically the concept behind layers is that you create something in the first layer and then if you want to add something, but you don't want to affect the first layer, it's like drawing in real life. Um, you draw in one paper and then you, you add another paper, draw in that one second one. If you don't want to ruin the first one, then if you want to add another layer and a paper, then you, you draw, you draw in the third paper first in order for you to create here in Photoshop, you most know the tools and in the left side of the screen here, we have the toolbar. Um, I'm going to show each one of you, each one of them to you. And the first one will be the zoom tool. Zoom tool is exactly what it says. Um, it zooms in and out, you know, for you to use it like this dragging, you have to click, um, the canvas and going up and down. And like that, you're going to zoom in and out. Now we're going to have the hand tool. Also, if you want to know exactly the names of these tools right here, you hover your mouth over the, the icon and it's going to tell you like right here, it says hand tool H and that H is the shortcut for that specific tool. So hand basically is the same as, as zoom. Like it gives you, um, it's, it, well, it's not same as zoom. Like it gives you uh, versatility to go around the image. Like if you're really zoomed out, if you're really zoomed out and you want to move around the paper or the canvas or the image, then you can do it with a hand tool. If you keep pressing the H, the, the hand icon, then you can see the different options for second option under, under the hand will be the rotate and exactly what it is. You rotate, you can rotate to whatever rotation angle you want. And if you want to get out of that, like if you, if you just leave it like that, you want to go back to the usual view, what you do, you press the escape key on your keyboard and that's it. So the third one would be the rectangular tool in this case is really that you can create rectangles. He selected those two colors because those are the colors that I have here on my, on my color palette. So the first, the foreground color would be the, the pinkish one that I have here. And on the top here is where you can change, um, the qualities of the figure that you just drew. So for example, right here, it's a rectangle. You can change the fill. You can change to any color you want. If you want to change to a specific color that you have, you can press this. 
you can find the hair all the way you can any color that you want also if you have if you have a specific color and you have the code for that specific color then you go down here and you press the and you type in the color that you want so for example i'm just gonna make one up because obviously i don't know i don't know any color by by heart that's a nice color so i leave that there and i'm gonna select that one all right then we have the stroke stroke same is is the boat this border right here you can change the stroke side size let's go here you can you can change the stroke size to whatever you want if you want to like really thick or if you want to like really light around the figure then you have it like that uh, you can also change the color of the stroke you can make it red um, and then you can make it bigger so you can notice the red there you go you can get creative with that also you can get the type of light that this um, rectangle has if it's dash lines that aligns you you got it also it's not only a rectangle that you can do with this you can do as many many forms if you for example want to do a square you select the rectangle tool and then you just press shift if you press shift then the other sides are going to be the same size and it's going to give you doesn't matter how it's going to give you a perfect square on the side if you notice on the side of my um, arrow you can see the exact size width and height of my square um, that can be really helpful if you're designing specific thing also and obviously it's gonna stay with the same qualities of of the past one because I edited it here which is a weird combination but yeah you you get the point all right the next one would be an ellipse same thing is an ellipse but if you press if you press shift, then it's going to create a perfect circle. And again, with the same qualities. All right. So for this one that we have the direct selection tool, we have, we can select whatever um, we have. So let's say we have two, right? So we can select um, one of the figures. Let's say, for example, this one or this one doesn't matter. We can select one of the figures and that's technically just to move around. That's just, just to move figures around anything that you want anything that you want so let's say for example we have this the, the first rectangle and we move it like this now if you want to transform the form of of set figure um, what you do is you select the white arrow direct selection tool this one what it does is that is it finds you have to find the corners of of intersections of of the of set figure and then you can change the form like this yes it's gonna ask you yes very photoshop is very respectful he asks you for permission to do everything um all right so so you get the point you can change angles and you can deform basically the the figure that you drew okay now the next tool is gonna be text right um, here I have another, here I have a picture and I have that picture that I shot on my way to Canada. And if you want to choose, for example, you have one picture and you want to do a social media post, what you do is you go to the text tool, um, click, and then you write whatever you want. Let's say I'm going to write Brian Ortega, which is my name. Um, the same thing as has happened in, the, in previous tools in the top here you change the um, specifications the characteristics of of the text so here for example I have Beba's name meow or however however you call this font then the type of of font I'll choose the regular one obviously the size is too small so I have to change it I'm gonna pick it up to 72 um, even 72, I find it a little bit too small. So what we do is you go up to the text right here to the T and then you move it up like this. Once you understand is a regular size of a okay size for you, then go here, right? We can move it around again and select this, that color because that's the color that I have here. But if we go up to, to the text and select the whole thing, we can change the color here. So now that you change the color, um, you can change the color. You can change, for example, if you're writing a paragraph, this um, Brian Ortega is recording a video 
of Photoshop. Yes. So Brian Ortega is recording a video of Photoshop. You can select all uh, using Control A on Windows and Command A for Max, and you can change the arrangement of this paragraph. So for example, here it's aligned to the to the left. That you can arrange it to the right, to the middle, and that's the next um, tool that I'm going to show you is the pen tool. So let's say I have this one here and I want to have the pencil here. Pencil is usually used to have more freedom when you're drawing. So let's say I have this like this. And this is basically that like you, you have, you draw whatever you want. I'm going back with control Z, command Z on, on windows, control Z on windows and command, command C on max. So let's say I want to something like this, but I want to make a curve. Then I just drag it like this and create that curve. Then I'm going to add another point another point like this. You know, you, you have a lot of freedom in terms of, of drawing with a pencil. It could be a little bit complicated. I am honestly not great at it, but it's just because I, I don't use it as much. We have a lot of options for pens, freedom pen tool. Uh, it's literally that you can write. Um, if you have a, a writing, a drawing tablet, then that's going to be amazing because it's going to give you the freedom of your hand. If you have like a pen to draw digitally, Again, I don't use it as much because of the work that I produce, but it's amazing to know. Uh, you can explore all this, the same um, concept. You see this pen is just for curves. And if you draw something, it's going to go all the way to curves. Now the next one is going to be um, Dutch, the Dutch and Burn. So right here I have a photo of a client that I did a couple of months ago, actually not even a couple of months, a month and a half ago. Um, and Dutch and Burn. If you if you know if you have any previous um, experience in photography, Dutch and Burn is a is an old school technique to like to brighten up or or darker an image in select areas, specific specific areas. So Dutch, it's um, to to bright to brighten up an image. So let's say for example here, uh, I want to brighten her face. So I just go like this. I click it a couple of times. And then that's that's kind of enough here in the top again. Uh, these things are the specification and characteristics of each tool. And here you can tell exactly the white areas you want to you want the, the brush to affect the midtones, the highlights and the shadows. Let's say, for example, you want to affect just the shadows of this image right here. And then you want to brighten up just the shadows. Then you brighten up all the shadows. If you want to, uh, the mittens as we did in the face, the highlights, if you want to bright up just the, the lamps in the top that are highlights and do not affect the shadows that are back, uh, like the, the trusses that are in the back, the, the roof, then you just affect the highlights here. Um, also you can change the amount of, um, let's say power that this tool has, the brush has once you're working with it. So if you do a hundred percent, for example, and you do this, then you're going to change a lot of the, you're going to affect a hundred percent of the highlights. In this case, same thing happens to the shadows. If you want to affect hundred percent of the shadows and you see how different now it affects the shadow parts of the photo. Now we have the next tool will be the sharpen tool and it is exactly what it says. Uh, you sharpen. Now we're going to zoom in a little bit with the tool that I show you guys, um, pressing Z in, in, in windows and also in Mac. But now let's say, for example, I find that, uh, this photo has no detail or, or is lacking detail. So what I do is I go to sharpen tool. You see, I click, 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 and you already can tell how sharp and you have to be careful with this tool because if you do a lot of it, it's going to look weird as hell. So I recommend be gentle with it. Just do a little bit, but that's obviously I did it like this. So you can understand what it does to the image. Um, it sharpens the email, it gives more detail to the image. Now, um, the next one will be paint bucket tool or G you can select G and you can come up with a tool. So now let's say you want to paint the whole canvas. Let's say I want to have, I don't know, this yellow greenish lime ish color, just one click and you change the whole background color, right? And in this background color, if you like, if you're putting tools together, you go down here to the text and you can like change, for example, this to black and you can write your name, Brian Ortega. And let's say now, for example, you select the whole thing and you would put it right in the middle there. Now, if you want to put it, if I want to put it right in the middle and I don't have any idea of where exactly in the middle it is. Uh, so what we do is that you select the first layer, then shift and the, and the first layer. And in the top right here, we see relationships. 
So let's say, for example, you want to make it right in the middle in the vertical axis, and then you click this, and it's going to shift right in the middle on the vertical axis. If you want to put it right in the middle in the X axis, in the horizontal axis, then what you do is you click this, it goes right to the middle. So we have paint bucket. And then let's say, for example, the next tool will be uh, the eraser tool, uh, which is also E in the keyboard. If we're not happy with what we have right now, let's say we want to create some weird effect. So what we do is, okay, so what we do is right here, we select the, the erasing tool and then we delete it because we, we want to get rid of the yellow one. All right, so the next one is going to be the history brush tool. And I have one example for here. This is a photo of a spa. And let's say, for example, I want to change something from from this image. Everything that is white, I'm going to paint it yellow. And then I say, oh, wow, I don't I really don't like that. So what I do is I go to the history. I change the size, for example, right here. What I do is to, to in order for you to change the size, what you do is you go up where it says 800 right there. You go up and change the sizes like this. You can change it like this. You make it smaller. Then you go like that. You make it bigger. You want to make it way bigger. You make it like that way bigger. If you want to change the hardness, which is um, how. So let's say, for example, in this case, this is low. It has like a smooth transition within the like from the center of the brush to the outside. So it's soft like that. You see, um, if you put it a hundred percent, then it's going to have no transition. It's going to go right with harsh edges. So basically what we do with this, what we do with, um, with the history brush, it takes the first snapshot of the photo, how the photo was when you put it into Photoshop and it records that information has it saved there. And whatever you do to the photo, you brush it. And then it's going to take it back to whatever it was the moment you put it into Photoshop. That's really good because sometimes you work and work and work on something. And that's exactly why I recommend using layers and you really dislike what you did in that image. What you do is you select the history brush tool and then you can go back in parts. Now the next one is going to be one of my favorite ones and it's the cloning stamp. What I do here, for example, let's say I want to get rid of these cables right here. This cloning stamp, what it does is um, it asks you for, it would ask you for, and it has, it's still a brush. So you have all the characteristics of a brush here on the top. You change everything, opacity, uh, the size, I'm sorry, the size. So basically the clone stamp, you select the source of the information that you're going to clone into. Um, by pressing alt in windows and option I think in max So let's say for example, I want to erase these cables right here What I do is that I select my source. I select alt in my windows and I select my source I click here and then I drag over here and I keep I stay drawing 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 there and you see how the cables are disappearing because I'm covering with the information that I got from my source so right here again, I'm going to select my source, click that and then go down here, down here, down here and be deleting that thing. And that's basically what you do for the whole thing that you can use it in so many different scenarios. That's exactly why I love it so much. The next one is the brush tool. In this one, I'm going to be, uh, I'm going to go a little bit into more depth. So let's say for example, I have a brush tool selected and let's say we select this, this color, the, the color that we used previously, the orange, not the orange, the yellow, greeny color. And on top here, we have the size, as you know, the hardness, most of the time I have it in zero because it's just softer to draw with this in zero, a really fast shortcut to change the size of, of your brush is using the brackets. Open brackets is gonna make it smaller and then closing brackets is gonna make it bigger. Uh, I'd rather using the brackets instead of going up here and changing the size. So the next one is the opacity. I, I already explained you this one. So now it's 100% opacity and 100% flow. If I make one stroke like this, then that is 100% opacity and 100% flow. Now, if I change opacity half and I go like that. So you see the difference how um, it's lighter now. And if I do it one more time, then it's going to be 45%, 45%, 45% until, you know, until it's completely yellow. Now, 
with flow, with that in flow is that flow, you can be at a hundred percent or passive, but flow, if you have a lower flow, you have to go many, many times, many times, many times, many times in order for it to be in a hundred percent, you know, the next one would be smoothing. Let me just get rid of this moving. It's, it's basically a percentage of if you do something like this, then smoothie, what does is if you want to go like that, smooth, just kind of averages the movement and gives you a, a smoother stroke. Now the next one will be spa healing brush. For this spa healing brush, I use it most. I'm go we're gonna utilize this photo. This is amazing here. The spa healing brush, what it does is analyzes what's around the area that you're gonna brush, and then it changes for the average of that area. So basically you go like this, you see, and it eliminates any things that Photoshop understands that it's not supposed to be there. So let's say for example here, we go here, here. You know, it changes all these things. Um, let's say for example this, oh, this is a great example. So for example, this, you want to get rid of this right here. What you do is you fill out the whole thing and there you go. Photoshop is really smart at doing that. When there's a higher contrast between those elements, it's, it's easier for Photoshop. The next one, the eyedropper, like it's, it's just that it's just to select a color that is in a specific image. Let's say I really, really like that, um, um, orange there. I select it, for example, here. And if I want to write something with that color, and he's going to utilize the same exact color that I selected there. So basically the eyedropper, uh, you can go I on your keyboard and select the eyedropper. It's just that it selects colors that you see in that image. Uh, the next one with the frame tool for the frame tool, I have this one and I want to frame it within a specific uh, frame size. If you want to create a, a circle and then you want to change the image, if you want to put it here, you see what it does, it, it, it analyzes the frame and and creates the photo based on the frame that you have that works a lot when you're writing something like a poster then that works fantastic so brian ortega let's say magazine uh, i guess magazine and it, it kind of does this like if you want to there you go you it selects a, a frame for whatever image you want to put in now the next one will be the cropping image that's literally um what it says is cropping if you understand that that is too much to have like it has two negative space then what you do is you select it there and you press enter and then just let's just do it right now there you go now if you want to be more specific in how you are cropping then you go up here and you select the for example original ratio if you want to stay with the same ratio that you had when cropping or if you have a specifications of the dimensions and ratio of this image you can go one by one which is a perfect square you can go four by eight which is for example the image size for instagram when vertical when it's vertical you can go five by seven you can go you can utilize all this um yes i use this a lot because when i am photographing sometimes you want to crop some information from it and and, and yes all right Felix. all right perfect now for let's go back to this let's make it okay let's go all the way back all right nice so now the next tools are gonna be selection tools so let's say for example you want to select one area because you want to draw something within that area you're going to utilize this these tools which is selection tools um here we have quick selection tool uh, this is a really easy way to select in this case selected it really fast because most of the area that I'm clicking on is blue so Photoshop understands that you want to select that similar that those areas that are blue um, same thing happens if you want to do select something here uh, so it's harder to for Photoshop sometimes it, it misses what you want to select so that's why the next tools are gonna come in handy so for example if we go down this one right here, we have the magic one tool. Magic one, uh, technically, um, let's it, it kind of uses Photoshop's magic and and analyzes the image, and then they guess. Photoshop guesses what you want to select. So you go like this, and there you go. Sometimes again, it makes you know it, it does its best. You click again, and that's it. That, that would be pretty much. Uh, for something like this, it wouldn't be, shouldn't be hard. 
um, all the tools should be really easy but now the next tool here it's more specific uh, more specific selection so if you go like this you want to select that blue sky again you're gonna go like this and there you go perfect go around and there you go you make a perfect selection of that blue sky let's say you want to do this because you want to get creative and you want to get i don't know red sky and you want to go you go back to the brush tool make this i don't know 29 percent let's say 27 percent and you draw over it with red because you want to because you're really creative well you're free to do so there you go now another another um ways of selection we have here are rectangulars which you can use so technically they're called marquees but yes you can use rectangular marquee tool and you make a selection of this let's say you want to let's go back let's say you want to highlight in this image that the entrances from the outside to the inside and you want to highlight that this so what you do is you get the brush and you paint under there well not under within there so basically that's that's what it does let's say that you want to that you don't want a rectangle that you want a circle so on a lips you do this remember if you keep pressing shift then it's going to create a perfect circle but that's pretty much what it does um the next one the next tool which is the tool that we have been using all the time is the movie move tool so basically this is what it is you select with this, this is the tool that you're going to use the most you should know it by now because you we've been using it for the whole video uh technically you use it to move things right to transform to change sizes right it's just the most used tool here in photoshop all right i know that was a long video but if you're still here that means you're already familiar with all the tools so from now on it's going to be way easier for you to manipulate photoshop let me know if you have a question down in the comments and i'll gladly answer back if you enjoyed this video click the like button share with a friend that you think is struggling with photoshop and subscribe for more videos like this okay so see you next time Thank you.